All right, what we're gonna look at today is uh, the setup of a machine for flux core. Uh, I'll focus on the portable setup in the shop. Uh, this is the XMT 350 MPA power supply. And of course we have the Miller 22A wire feeder. Gas is on the cart, the MIG gun, and ground clamps are all coiled up on the side. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that your uh, machine is plugged in. Um, in this case, you know, it is. If it's a portable machine, that's a concern. If it's a stationary machine, it's not usually a concern. But once you know the power is on, we're going to go ahead and open the lid. And when the lid is open, we're going to make sure the machine is on MIG mode. Uh, in this case, it is. Knob uh, just simply turns, it clicks. Um, the areas in orange are indicative of the fact that the uh, lead will be electrically hot as soon as you turn the power on. So we don't want to have a situation where the MIG gun may be electrically grounded or maybe it's coiled up in such a manner that the trigger is in contact with something and as soon as you turn the machine on it'll start feeding wire. So again, make sure that it's in MIG mode first, okay? Um, next thing is, of course, to double check to make sure the MIG gun is not uh, in going to start feeding wire. So right here, the MIG gun is hanging free <clears throat> and uh, the trigger's not full. So I'm going to go ahead and flip on the power switch. Uh, just flip it up right below. <clears throat> and once that display uh, comes on and we get a voltage reading, uh, we know the machine is ready to adjust. Um, we could adjust the voltage by turning this knob. Right now I'm not going to weld with this, so I'm just going to leave it at 24 and a half, which is not, not a bad voltage, honestly, for flux core work. Um, <clears throat> this machine has a setup button, so I'll press that. Uh, our control or inductance is on 100%. That is typical for flux core, uh, inductance or arc control or dig setting, whatever it's called in your machine, be wide open. Um, wire type, 052 flux core, although I don't believe for the slightest second that it makes a difference on MIG mode. And the gas type is argon CO2, which again, I don't believe on this machine it makes the slightest difference in MIG mode. Okay, For, for pulse arc, that would be different, but we're not going to talk pulse arc today. So MIG mode, we have a voltage set <clears throat> and power is on. All right, the next thing that we're going to check is the feeder itself. Um, I have a roll of wire on this now, but again, get in the habit of checking the tag on the feeder. Uh, you're looking for the AWS codes in here or the manufacturer's uh, brand or trade name, if you will, um, and of course the diameter of the wire. Those are the things that you want to check. Just because it's copper coated doesn't mean it's MIG wire. This is in fact flux core. I'm gonna lift the lid and I'm gonna check the drive roll setup. I wanna make sure that the drive roll tension is not uh, excessively tight. In this case, uh, this lever flipped down relatively easily, so I'm gonna assume it's in the ballpark. Um, I wanna check the drive roll type so on the drive rolls uh, that they're labeled, and you may have to remove the drive rolls in order to check that. But again, we're running 052 wire, so I want to make sure I have 052 drive rolls. And we're running flux core or hollow wire, so I want to make sure the drive rolls have knurling. I don't want smooth rolls for that purpose. Again, I'll reset this. <clears throat> I want to make sure the MIG gun is plugged in all the way and that the knob is tight. If the MIG gun is all the way in, the gap between the end of the MIG gun uh, right here and the drive roll should be minimal. You don't want a lot of wire uh, sticking out because it will buckle and it will cause a jam. So my MIG gun is in all the way. The MIG gun is plugged in. The trigger loop is uh, connected. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uncoil the MIG gun. In this case, it happens to be coiled up. So I'm going to remove this from the machine. I'm going to carefully open this MIG gun up. So here it is, making sure I don't make any loops. And I'm going to just pull the trigger 
and in fact it is feeding wire okay so I know that the cycle is working uh, double check this folks uh, there are settings and I will demonstrate this now on the front there is a trigger hold setting I'm going to flip this up and watch what happens just touch the trigger once and it will feed wire okay until I touch the trigger again and it stops um, that's a great setting if you know it's going to happen okay otherwise you want the trigger hold setting down and essentially the pictogram shows either a fist which means the trigger is continuously pressed or the finger is uh, out in indicating that it has been tapped and it will continue to feed so you want to make sure you're aware of that trigger setting all right now that we have power we have wire and we have verified that the trigger is operating the way we want we're going to check our gas the first thing to check is to make sure that you in fact uh, have the correct gas type right now the machine is hooked up there is a gas line which I can trace around uh, again it's right here so here's the gas hose going over it's plugged in and uh, it goes to my harness which ultimately connects to my feeder um, checking your mechanical connections is not a bad idea folks um, I won't go through all of those today but you should check to make sure stuff is properly plugged in in terms of your gas your biggest concern is that you have the correct gas type I have 25% carbon dioxide 75% argon uh, commonly known as C25 okay that's the gas I want to use um, and in fact that's the gas that the machine is hooked up to <clears throat> next to that is another bottle it's a different gas mix 5% CO2 95% argon other than the fact that one has kind of glossy paint and the other's a little duller they're the same color bottle so don't fall into the trap of assuming that the color of the bottle means anything um, it doesn't it's just what color paint they had on hand when they happen to paint the bottles that day um, so once we know we have the correct gas we're going to go ahead and uh, hook up now in terms of uh, setting up again we're going to keep it simple this time assuming things are basically right I'm going to open this valve okay I have gas the needle came up you don't have to have 2,000 psi in order to uh, weld folks as long as it's above 50 it will work granted not for long if there's only 50 but it will work so I'm going to open this valve all the way okay your fuel gases such as acetylene propylene mat are only opened about uh, a turn but your other gases your high pressure cylinders are going to be opened 100 percent so open this until again it stops this is a flow meter so it's not adjustable here like a regular uh, regulator this is factory set uh, 40 psi somewhere thereabouts and we have to adjust our flow rate so we're going to set our flow uh, again for flux core i'm going to run anywhere between 35 and 45 cubic feet per hour if you're working to a spec go with whatever the spec says but here in the shop trust me that's plenty of gas so in order to set that I can uh, if I have a long length of gas hose I can simply turn this knob and while the gas flows through filling up maybe 50 feet of hose you have time to adjust it this hose is pretty short so again I won't have a lot of time to adjust this so there it went up and it went down it went up because the gas flowed into the hose it went down because the hose is full so in order to verify that setting um, you or someone else you may have to do this with a partner is going to press the the button down to jog or purge and again this will uh, purge down it shows the pictogram shows gas up is jog to manually feed wire without pulling the trigger so with that purge I'm going to simply press this and right now I have 50 cubic feet per hour it's more than I need so I'm going to turn this valve a little bit closed and then I'll adjust it so there's 30 so a little bit of went a long ways here okay I'm going to open this just a little bit more and I'll check it again okay so the flow rate is important I'm at 40 cubic feet per hour okay the uh, scale is uh, generally set so the ball bottom is where it reads so I want the bottom of the ball at the 40 line okay 
So we have gas, we have wire, we have the correct settings. Uh, I don't know what my wire feed speed is right now. I just know the knob is on four, um, but for 24 and a half volts, I probably want to run about 250 inches per minute out of the MIG gun, which would be a starting point. Um, but on a high level, that's the setup, okay? We'll go over the individual steps in detail uh, in case you need a little bit more understanding on uh, drive rolls, aligning the rolls, uh, for example, wire feed, uh, tension here, uh, hooking up regulators, you know, troubleshooting techniques, the whole nine yards. But that is the basic setup. So now we're ready to hook up and weld. So the very, very last thing before we actually hook up and weld is going to be to make sure that our ground clamp and our power cables are connected securely. The power cable in this case is easy to discern. Um, there's our positive, okay, the power will always hook to positive. Uh, and of course, if I trace this cable out, it goes up to the wire feeder. So this is the power cable. The ground clamp, again, is really easy to figure out because uh, there it is on the bottom. Again, I have negative, okay, on the ground. And there is the cable coiled up. It's not always going to be that easy. Uh, cables can become entangled with one another. So you have to take the time to trace it out. But again, check your connections. So the ground clamp itself, again, I want to make sure that it's working correctly. Uh, it's a heavy spring in there. It should take a lot of effort. I want to make sure that there's no loose connections on this. And ultimately, when I hook the ground up, I want to make sure that the side where the cable physically hooks to is connected to the side of the material that I cleaned, okay? Um, there is a braided cable inside this clamp, if you can see this, that connects uh, one side of this to the other. But again, we want to minimize the electrical paths when we hook up. We're going to make sure that the side that the cable hooks to is, in fact, the side that is connected to the clean part of the circuit. So as long as we have tight connections, uh, I want to make sure that these connections are physically tight. They do not want to be loose. In theory, we're ready to weld. So if I bring my cable over, connect it to my table, and I have gas hooked up, I should be able to pull the trigger and produce a little bit of arc. Right. So from that point, you're going to simply tune your machine into where you like it and you're ready to roll. That in 13 minutes is a complete MIG gun setup with explanation.